Hey everybody, this is Kevin and welcome to a new video series on the building and flying of the Rocketarium VK7. This is a cluster model rocket kit, which is the first time I've ever experimented with cluster rocketing. And just to give you a quick background, this last Christmas my daughter purchased this for me for Christmas, not knowing anything about model rockets, but she uh, did her homework and decided this would be the one she would get dad and I am quite pleased with her selection and again this is a cluster model rocket so she didn't realize she was getting me into a whole new arena of the hobby but I look forward to it uh, it says it'll fly on two B44s or two B64s or even two C65s so that'll be exciting to see what I can do with uh, twice the horsepower so to speak so first thing we got to do is rip into this kit and see what we got so let's go ahead and do an unboxing here I've seen a lot of video reviews on the Rocketarium kits and I'm very, very impressed with the quality of the kit. So I expect nothing less. Gotta be careful I don't go too deep. There we go. All right, so here we go. Awesome, look at that individually bagged items as well. So we've got two tubes. One's uh, quite a bit shorter than the other. That tube's been elongated by shoving the, the fins in there. I don't know if that's deliberate or not, but I'm sure the coupler will round that right back out. Not bad. All right, so let's just go ahead and <clears throat> empty the contents and then I'll get the instructions out and we'll do a quick inventory. VK7 sounding rocket kit and looks like the parts list is on the back okay there should be a white decal there it is and a black decal there it is looks like vinyl lettering that's been uh, cut with a cutting machine to give the, the letters and the words um, a black band not sure what they mean by that We'll come back to that, whatever's left over. Uh, eight, uh, 18 inch plastic parachute. There's our chute pre-fitted with the shroud lines attached. It's a good size chute. Uh, eighth inch basswood fins. Here's our four fins, all equally cut. Then we've got our two body tubes, our 15 inch and our, sorry about that, our 15 inch and our nine inch. So there's the two tubes. You can see the difference in length. Our white collar tube, there should be three of them. Here they are. And our BT60 nose cone, right there. And also our small parts bag should have our shock cord. I'm not gonna open it if I can see what's in it. Uh, two 3 16 inch log, uh, launch lugs which are there, the lug standoffs. It's, those are those two long skinny pieces. Yep, they're both there. And the VK7 rectangles. Should be eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, they're all there. And our motor parts bag. We should have the two cluster rings, one with a small notch and one with a large notch. There's our two rings right there. Our clip holder, our green thr uh, thrust ring, two motor tubes because we got two motors, our yellow spacer, which I can see is tucked up in one of the tubes, so it is there, and our standard clip. And there should be two of those, and I see both of those up in the tube as well. Now the instructions say there should be one standard clip. I think there should be two because there's two motors, but. Uh, there are, and there are two in the kit, so that's good. And our baffle kit, our BT-60 baffle. Now this is intriguing. I've never done a baffle before, but the purpose of the baffle is you've got these, well, let me just go ahead and open and show you. 
if you've never messed with baffles before. It's similar to a coupler, but it inserts near the bottom of the rocket, but you've got a top and a bottom, and they simply just glue into the ends here. And what this does is the exhaust, I'm sorry, the ejection force from the motor that blows forward, pushing the parachute out, the heat and the flame will have to pass through these holes, and by the time they exit, the air has been cooled off and no flame will come out, and it prevents your parachute from burning up. So this actually will take the place of wadding. So if you run a baffle, you don't have to put wadding or a shoe protector in to protect the, the contents up front. So very cool addition. And they throw that in there as part of the kit. That's an awesome, awesome piece. So that completes our inventory. So we're gonna go ahead and take a pause here and uh, we'll get right into the building in step one. Okay, assembly on the VK7 begins with the motor mount assemblies. It's a sub-assembly within the kit and it's actually a good idea to get this out of the way so the glue can start hardening and curing while you proceed with the rest of the kit. But the first thing we need to do is glue the thrust rings into the individual motor tubes. Now remember, we're going to do two of everything because there are two motors on this rocket and the process for each is identical. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is glue in the thrust rings three quarters of an inch into the forward end of each tube. And to do that, I'm going to use this little applicator stick to run our wood glue. I'm going to use uh, wood glue is the, for me, I found the best bonding adhesive for cardboard pieces together. It's as good as epoxy or any other strong uh, glue. So first thing you want to do is I'm going to mark off three quarters of an inch on my application stick so I know how far in. I need to apply the glue. And then once we get the glue inside the tube, I'm going to set the thrust ring in the aft end and then simply run it up the tube using the spacer all the way until the spacer becomes flush with the bottom. And then that'll position the thrust ring exactly the correct distance down the tube. So first thing we need to do is get some glue on the applicator stick. I'm gonna run it all the way down till that stick, uh, till that line on the stick is visible. And I'm simply just gonna run that around. Look in there, make sure we got good bond. Sure enough, there's a good amount there, which is good. Then again, I'm gonna run the thrust ring in from the aft end, use my spacer tube, and then we gotta put it all, all the way flush. There's flush. Quickly remove the spacer tube so it doesn't glue into the tube. So there we go. Now I'm just going to let that sit and dry. Do the same thing for this tube here. And as you push the thrust ring into that glue, it'll build up a little bit of a, a fillet on the fore end of it, which is exactly what you want. So. Okay, run this into that line. Run that around. Perfect. Again, I'm gonna run it from the aft end. And the reason that for that is you want the excess glue pushed away from where the motor's gonna be, not where the motor is gonna be, because then it'll be a little bit harder for your motor to, to fit all the way in. So again, run all that all the way up till it's flush on the bottom. Remove the spacer, and now your thrust ring is exactly where you want it to be. So I'm gonna let that sit for a few moments, and then we'll get back to gluing the centering rings around the tubes. Okay, the next step we have to do is to insert our engine hooks into each motor tube. And they tell you to measure two and three quarter inch from the aft end of the tube to where you need to cut your little slot for the hook to go into and then they also tell you and that slot needs to be just up against the thrust ring on the inside and they warn you about you know not if you cut in and you hit the thrust ring start over and cut well what I've decided to do is just to eliminate the measuring I'm just going to take a caliper 
with the push out end and measure the depth from the tube into the thrust ring right there. Now I've got an exact distance to measure to where I need to put that little slot. So I'm going to run that up against, draw a little line, and now I know that my slot needs to be just forward of that little notch, the little mark I made. So I'll take my knife, and again this is going to be about an eighth of an inch slit, should be sufficient. And sure enough, it lines up perfectly up against the thrust ring. So that little caliper method is just something I'll, I do just to eliminate having to measure, and you know it's going to be absolutely perfect. So that's the first one. We'll do the same thing for the other tube. And once again, I'm going to mark just, I'm going to make the slot just forward of that mark I made. And that should fit nicely right in there, just as so. All right, excellent. Now the next step is going to be inserting the centering rings and the clip holder and I'll do that in the next step. Okay, the next step we've got to do is to glue the center ring lock on the tubes, and for this I'm using epoxy because wood glue is not really good on plastic, and epoxy is good on both plastic and cardboard, so it's a good combination for the two. I've already pre-mixed my five minute epoxy, so I'm gonna get going here and not uh, <laughs> waste too much time before it sets. But what I wanna do is I've already marked one and a quarter inch from the back of the tube and then I also marked a quarter inch ahead of that so I know where to place the epoxy. I'm going to put the epoxy on the actual tube and if it's a little for, uh, on the aft end that's okay because it's going to be pushed forward by the centering ring so I'm going to do a lot of talking while I'm doing this step here
Okay, I'm gonna twist the tube just a little bit so the ring will hold the hook in a straight line. That's what we want, straight. Okay, everything looks good. And while that is starting to cure, I can go ahead and begin with the wood glue on the centering ring. Always keep some rubbing alcohol handy so you can clean off any epoxy. And we can make up some fillets after the fact, although it looks like the epoxy sort of made its own fillet, which works just fine for our purposes. Okay, so now we're gonna get to our wood glue. And I've already made the marks for that as well. We want, on the aft end of the uh, motor assembly, we want a quarter inch in from the back of the tube. And then I also marked another eighth of an inch ahead of that because the width of the centering ring is an eighth of an inch. And then on the forward end, there's no precise measurement. They just say to bring the centering ring over the hook where it goes into the tube. So let me go ahead and get my applicator stick. And same thing, I'm gonna push the, t the rings onto the motor tubes in the direction that the fillets are gonna be on the inside of the tube, not facing out. But if they do happen to face out, I can just easily uh, wipe that down with the Q-tip. And I'm gonna make fillets later on anyhow. But be careful, you don't wanna get glue on the engine hook because it needs to be free to move up and down so you can insert your motors. I realize I'm not talking a lot during this process. I just really want to concentrate on getting getting the glue down where it needs to be. This will probably be the last little bit of glue I need to, to lay down. And again, our fillets will, will help as well. Okay, so we want to take the aft ring and make sure it's oriented in the right direction. Slide it onto the two tubes. There we go, almost. One more. There. And I got some epoxy on my finger, which is not good. Let me wipe that off real quick. So the glue's already starting to set up, which is good because then we don't have to, it'll kind of hold everything in position for us, making our life a little bit easier with the, uh, the centering rings. Okay, I temporarily stopped the video because I was having trouble getting the ring over the tubes initially. So what I did was I just went ahead and got them dry fitted over the edge. And now I'm gonna run another bead of glue, which I cleaned off the last bead. And then uh, I'll just go ahead and run it on now that it's on the tubes. But I was having trouble getting it cleared on both, both sides of the tube. So we'll go ahead and try this again. Actually, you know what, I can just probably just do it like this. Just make sure I stay clear of the, uh, the wire.
and there'll be plenty of excess glue but I can easily just wipe that up okay there we go that was a lot easier way of doing it now let me just slip this over let me lay down a piece of paper towel because it's probably gonna ooze out and go everywhere okay there are my marks I can still see them there we go and just kind of clean that up with a q-tip And I'll go back in and make some good looking fillets when all is said and done. Actually it wouldn't hurt to run run a bead of glue up that center. So lesson learned there, go ahead and get the uh, the ring started on the tubes before you apply the glue because sometimes they don't want to fit right, so. Okay, now that we got that aft ring in, let's go ahead and get the front one in. And again, I'm gonna, <laughs> learn, lesson learned, I'm gonna dry fit this first. There we go. And again, there's no measurement on the, the front one. It just needs to make sure and clear the slot where the wire goes in. So same thing, I'm just gonna run my glue. And this one's okay to get the glue on the wire because it's going to stay down on the cardboard anyway. Okay, now we'll just slowly slide this in and over. I need to make sure the notches in the centering ring coincide with the direction the ring is going on. And you want to try to make it as perpendicular as you possibly can so it'll fit better into the body tube once you get to that point. That looks good. That looks real good. Okay. I'm gonna clean some of this up so it doesn't dry all clumpy. And then I'll go in when it's all dry and put in some nice fillets later. So there is our completed motor mount. You might want to just double check and make sure that your, your hooks operate freely. Like so. Everything's good, everything's straight. Give it the roll test. <laughs> Rolls good, no wobble to it. So that's, uh, that's where we're at. There's our engine tube. I'm gonna let that sit and dry overnight. So it'll be good and ready for installation into the body tube. All right, the next step we have is to mark the locations for both the fins and the launch lugs. Now, one thing I wanna show you, cause you'll probably notice in the back, I temporarily installed the motor mount in the tube for one main reason. The tube itself had a little bit of a warp to it. It was more of an oval shape. So I put the motor mount in there just to keep the round shape so it'll make marking a lot easier. Um, once I get the marks, I'll go ahead and pull that out. But what you want to do is take the template that's in the instructions. I went ahead and photocopied it so I wouldn't have to cut up the actual instructions. But you simply take the, the template, cut it out, and then just take a piece of tape. Make sure you line up the two marks. Like so. Tape it down. And then you just grab a pencil and you mark at each location of the arrows. And 
and you'll notice that the one for the launch lug is exactly between two sets of fins and I'll mark that with an LL just so I know because once I get these marks done I'm gonna have to extend these lines the length of the tube at least halfway up the tube there we go so the LL is this one right here okay and then you just simply slide that right off now what I use is I use the Estes alignment guide and what I'm going to do is first mark the launch lug and the instructions recommend that you draw this line the entire length of the tube uh, it seems a little excessive to me but you know better to have too much line than not enough so let me just secure that And then we'll do the fins halfway up the tube, because obviously the fins don't go up that high. to go there we are so now I can go ahead and take the motor mount out which again was just in there temporarily just to hold the shape see it had a well now it's actually kind of helped form it but it was a little bit squished and it had more of an oval shape so anyway I'm glad I had this ready to go to help hold that support all right, the next step we're gonna do is making the baffle. So we'll get right into that. Okay, the next step is building the ejection baffle. And this is a BT60 size, which is the size of our body tube. And the first thing they would ask you to do is to take your eye screw and thread it into the one plate that's got the pre-drilled center hole. Just go ahead and run that through to get the threads all set. And then take it out and we want to glue this in and get that started to dry while we finish with the rest of the steps. So I'm simply just going to take my wood glue put a dab of glue and now what the what's going to happen is the threads of the screw itself are going to help take the glue into the threads. And you don't want to screw it in beyond the threads because you don't want bare metal without the, the teeth in the wood. You want as much grip on the wood as possible. So we're going to take that in right till it stops. And then I want to, well you can basically see it's got its own little fillet now built in. We'll leave that alone. But I want to build up a little bit of a fillet on the back side as well. Oops. Didn't mean to bump the camera, sorry about that. And just kind of use your finger to wrap around and help build up that fillet. Okay, so with that, I'm going to set this aside and let it start drying while we do the next step. Okay, the next step is to take the aft end of the, the baffle, this plate, and we're simply just going to run a ring of glue on the inside, and then you slide it in. And the instructions call for uh, insetting this about 1 16th of an inch. So what I did was I just cut out a 16th inch piece of balsa wood, and I'm just going to press that onto that, and then we'll have our perfect 16th inch lip on the inside. So. Let me go ahead and run a bead of glue. Okay. 
and then I'll use my finger just to help spread it out a little bit better. And then as we push the plate in, it's going to create a fillet on the backside naturally. So that'll just occur without any effort. Okay, and we'll take our, our plate, get it started, and then simply place it on our 16th inch piece. There we go. I'm going to press it down, make sure it's even. And there we have it. A perfect 1 16th inch lip all the way around. Okay, now we're just going to set this aside and let it dry. And then when it's set up fairly well, then I'll go ahead and glue the other part of the baffle in. So we'll come right back to it in a minute. Okay, now we're going to continue on finishing up with the baffle. It's been about an hour or so, and so we've had enough time for the glue to set and hold the, the rearward plate in, in place. Now it's time to glue the forward plate. And I'm just going to have to eyeball the sixteenth of an inch, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to leave enough lip there so I can run a fillet. And speaking of fillets, before I glue this part in, I want to build up a fillet on the inside of the aft baffle plate. Because if you think about it, the, the force of the ejection shard is going this direction. So I want to build up just a little bit here of a fillet to, you know, just help keep it from blowing forward on us at all. So I can go ahead and run this fillet in and then I'll, we'll do the forward plate. But let me just pour some glue in here. It doesn't have to be pretty because you're never going to see it again. That's probably enough. And now I'll just use my finger and run that fillet all the way around the, the base of it. Okay, and again, it's not beautiful, it's not gonna be beautiful, but that's okay. So, grab a quick paper towel here. Let me clean that up just a little bit more. There we go. So you can see I've got the fillet all the way around in there and that'll hold that plate much more securely. And when all, all is said and done, we're gonna do a, a fillet on this lip as well, but that'll be later on. So now we can go ahead and run a quick bead of glue around the inside here and install the forward plate. Same technique as we did on the, the last one. And that's probably a little too much, but that's okay. There we go. All right, now we'll just simply set this in here, like so, let it sit maybe 16th of an inch down, and we're just gonna let that sit and dry. There we go. Okay, now we've come to the part where we glue the motor mount into the body tube. Now, if you remember, this body tube was slightly crushed in the box. You can kind of see it's more oblong than circular. Um, and that's why I decided to use this as the aft end of the tube because the motor mount with its centering rings would push that out in a perfect circle. So I'm going to use the motor mount to fix that defect in the tube and that's why I marked the fin and the launch lug lines on that end of the tube so what the instructions calling call for is to run a bead of glue two and a half inches down inside the tube run the motor mount about halfway up and then put another layer of glue for the aft centering ring and I, I'll just forewarn you, when I get to pushing the second ring in, it's going to be a little tricky because I've got to kind of get it to fit within that shape. And then you simply make the back end of the tube flush with the motor tubes. Not the clips, but the motor tubes themselves. So we'll go ahead and get that operation going here. 
And for this operation, I'm gonna use some wood glue again. Maybe put two or three coatings of glue in there. Cause I can only get so much on the stick at a time. And then we'll just maybe one more pass. Okay. This should be sufficient. Okay, take a look down there. Oh, we got a nice ring set there. That'll work. I'll tell you what, let me put one more bead of glue in there just to play it safe. All right, good deal. All right, so we're gonna get this started in by putting the forward ring in first. There, okay. Now that we've got that started, I can run my glue for the after ring. And you kind of want to do this a little quicker than normal just because once the glue starts to set, it makes it a little bit harder to, to push the rings into it. And the other thing I want to do too is give a little bit of twist to the motor mount as I shove it in because that way it'll help spread the glue a little bit better as well. here in a second. Steal from there. Good deal. All right, bear with me as I try to work this in. There we got the motor tubes flush with the body tube. Perfect. Now once that dries, I'll uh, go ahead and run some fillets around the, the base there of the plate. But uh, looking down, I'm not sure if you can pick that up on camera. It, as we push the, the tube in, or the, the mount into the tube, it's, it basically generated its own fillet on the forward end. 
Hard to get the light down the tube just right. But, uh, very good. So now we're just going to let this sit and dry and uh, move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is building up the launch lugs. And what we need to do is take a launch lug and glue it to the launch lug standoff, which is a little piece of balsa wood here. Uh, they're the exact same length, so basically all we gotta do is apply a bead of wood glue and uh, glue that down and just let it sit and uh, do that for both. So let me do that. I think the easiest thing will be put, putting the glue on the wood as opposed to the, the lug. And it won't take much. And then w once we uh, get this thing built and finished, I'll, I'll apply a fillet to this joint, which will help strengthen it as well. So I don't think there's any way of doing this and not getting messy. <laughs> so we'll just deal with it as it comes. Okay. And then take a lug, lay it down. And now we'll just check for alignment, make sure it's straight before we leave it to set. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let me just press it down a little harder. Okay, so we'll just set that side and we'll grab the next one Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, now we're gonna let that sit and dry as the other one did. Okay, since we're getting close to the point where we glue the fins onto the tube, I wanna go ahead and get that fillet inlaid in the back end of that motor plate because it's gonna be a lot harder to do that when the fins are, you know, in my in the way. And so, and this won't be much of a, a chore. In fact, I'm just going to simply kind of put a glob of glue in there and then use a Q-tip and spread it around. But you got to be careful not to get glue near that opening for the clip to open back up. So let's see if I can uh, do this without making too big a mess. I'm just going to put some glue down in there. Okay. Take a Q-tip and I'm just going to use this to spread it. Always have plenty of Q-tips on hand. There we go. Okay, now we'll do the other side. And maybe not use quite as much as I did on the first <laughs> first side. applicator stick to help kind of work some of the glue around.
There we go. And we still want to make sure we got freedom in those clips, which we do. All right, very good. We'll just let that set up before we attempt to glue the fins on and the launch lug. All right, in this quick step, the glue has dried on both end plates of the baffle. And I'm just simply gonna lay uh, wood glue around the, the lip here and with, with my finger make a little fillet. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. And I'm gonna be using Q-tips to help kinda clean it up. Uh, use it to clear out the holes if any, if any drips into the holes. So I'm gonna try to keep it minimal, but uh, this is a pretty straightforward process. And uh, I'm just gonna pour the glue onto it. Not much at all, a uh, minimal amount. Cause I definitely don't want to fill in those holes, which is already starting to happen a little bit I see, but uh, we'll try to clean that out. Let's see what we can do here. Here, I'll use my finger first. Yeah, we're getting a little bit in those holes, so we'll clean those out with the uh, Q-tips. Okay. Actually, it's, it's working pretty good. All right. Got those nice and clean. Pretty clean fillet. Now we'll do the other side. Now this one's gonna be a lot easier, obviously, because the holes aren't anywhere near the edge. Put it on a little sloppy, but that's okay because it's gonna clean right up with the finger. As I'm going around, I'm kind of pulling the glue to the outer edge, which kind of helps give it that that little wall build up. There, I can't think of much else to do to it. That's that's about it. Make sure there's nothing on the outer edge that'll interfere with the sliding into the body tube. But uh, no, it looks good. So I'm just gonna set this aside and let it dry. Okay, so now we've come to the point where I'm going to divert a little bit from the directions. The instruction manual calls for now gluing on the launch lugs, well at least one launch lug, onto the body tube. The one at the rear where the fins are going to be. However, when I glue my fins on, I want to be able to run a nice fillet down the side. And I'm afraid that the launch lug is going to be in the way. So I'm going to do the launch lug after I glue the fins on. Now, one other thing I want to show you that I did, you can probably see already the leading edge of the fins have already been sanded down to 45 degree angles and the instructions call for this however I didn't just I didn't sand them down I actually used a router and I'm going to show you that process here in the next segment how I got these ground down to the leading edge shape that I've got so uh, stand by for that video and then after that we're going to start gluing these onto our body tube
Okay, before we actually glue the fins onto the body tube, I wanted to glue these little rectangular pieces onto the fin, which they call on doing after you glue them on the, the body. I just don't see how that would be easier than gluing these on first. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these on prior to gluing them on to the body. So let me do the first fin and then I'll go ahead and do the other three off camera. But I'm just going to simply take some medium CA glue and I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to put a dot of glue in the middle and it'll it'll kind of push out and it may that might even be too much. I don't know, but um, I'm going to position it and then once I get it right where I want it, then I can go ahead and press it down firmly. Just like so. Press it down. And a little bit did come out the side, which is good. That, that shows that we got full adhesion. And then uh, just a quick squirt of kicker and she's permanent so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side now that looks like I might have put a little too much on Go ahead and align it, press it down, make sure it looks equal from the back and from the side, it is, and a little spray of kicker. Alright, so now I've shown you how I did the first one, I'm going to go ahead and replicate this on the other three fins, and then we'll do it. go ahead and glue them to the body. Okay, now we're going to start gluing the fins on the body tube. And I'm going to do the first one and show you, and then I'll just go ahead and do the other three off camera. Uh, one thing I did off camera also was I went ahead and marked the forward point of where the fin lines up because you want the aft end of the fin to line up with the aft end of the body tube. When I did that, I got a front point, so I marked that so I'll know where to lay the uh, leading edge down onto. And then uh, in addition to, I'm going to be using epoxy, a five minute epoxy to hold it. Uh, the other thing I did too was I sanded down and scuffed up the cardboard along the line that the epoxy is going to adhere to. It makes it a little bit better bondage. And I also sanded down the, the root edge of the fin as well. So we'll get better adhesion. And once I get the epoxy down and the fin on, I'm going to use a little bit of thin CA glue just to help hold it in position while the epoxy sets up. That'll keep things uh, aligned for me better and, and make things a little bit easier. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and take my five minute epoxy. Sorry about that. And run a very thin, thin layer along the, the root. like so and we're gonna pick out one of the first lines too. we want to make sure you don't do the launch lug line so we're gonna go let's go to the one next to it there okay I'm gonna lay it on and epoxy is pretty tacky and thick so it'll hold its hold it fairly well on its own I just want to line up, make sure everything looks straight. And I want to take a Q-tip because I'm going to do some strong fillets later. But I'm going to spray some alcohol on a Q-tip and clean up this that seeped out the side only because we're going to lay down a stronger fillet in the future. 
Okay. This is just to clean out anything that oozed out on either side. Okay. And again, this is five minute epoxy, so I've got a little bit of working time. Not a whole lot, but enough to where I don't have to rush things and make it too complicated. So I want to look, look at it from behind. There's a good view for the camera. Look at it from the nose. Okay, it looks good. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of medium CA and put a little dab in the fillet area. Take a Q-tip and wipe it out so we don't have a buildup. And then I'm just gonna spray that with some kicker. And again, this is just to hold the fin while the epoxy sets up. Okay, and I'm gonna do the leading edge on the right side. And again, I'm not putting much down, just enough to, as they would say in the welding world, just a tack weld is all I'm putting down. Perfect. Really can't ask for any more than that. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna let that epoxy cure, and then I'll mix up another batch for each fin. Because five minutes, I don't wanna try to do two with one batch. That just gets a little too, too rushed. So I'm gonna do the other three off camera, and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, we are now at the point where the fins have completely dried while sitting overnight with the five minute epoxy. And now we're going to apply our fin fillets. And to do that, I'm gonna use Rock Epoxy, which is another epoxy based product, but this stuff is super, super strong. I've already pre-mixed it. Um, <laughs> I think I went a little overboard, probably mixed up too much, but I'd rather have too much than come short and have to remix a new batch. And I've also prepped the body in that I've already taped off where I want the fillets to go. What I'll do is I'll lay down a bead with a popsicle stick, I'll run it smooth, and then I'll peel the tape off and that should leave some really nice fine lines. And uh, the nice thing about rock epoxy is it's so thick it will not run. So pretty much any position I put it in, it'll hold that form until it dries. So I don't have to worry about you know it running one way or the other. It's, it's gonna hold its position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the first fin here on camera, and then I'll fast forward to the end and I'll peel the tape off and show you what the final result's gonna be. So I'm just gonna take the rock epoxy and let, let it kind of fall down into that groove. I'm gonna sort of push it into the gap, into the corner. And this is not the stick that I'm gonna to use to, to clean the fillet. I'm just using this stick to kind of position the epoxy where I want it. This is one of those operations where prep time is paramount to good success and good clean 
results. And I don't mean in a physical sense, but in a cosmetic sense. Um, anybody could just slap on some rocket epoxy and it would be a, a, it would do a great job. But by taking my time to mask it off first is really going to make for a nice, clean, cosmetic job. Okay, so there's the layer. Now I'm just going to simply run my stick up the groove, creating that fillet. One smooth, steady pace. There we go. Now I'm going to use this to start the next side. Okay. And this is where the real strength comes in because the the epoxy joint on the root of the fin where it ma matches the uh, the body that holds it in position but there's not a whole lot of lateral strength there this is what really gives it that firm strong hold on the rocket one again just because I got a little on that front end there that I want to clean up. And again on this side. And what you can also do is, if you want to do a little cleanup, sim simply take a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol, and you can sort of work out and smooth out any issues like such. Okay, that really cleans up that front end. Okay, so one fin down. So now we'll just go ahead and fast forward to the end when I peel the tape off and show you the final product. Okay, as you can see, I ended up using just about all of the rock epoxy, so I'm glad I mixed up as much as I did. That being said, all the fillets are now in place. You can see them in the grooves down there. And now what I'm going to do is simply peel the tape off, and we should be uh, revealing nice, clean fillet lines. So let's go ahead and start. And I want to pull away from the, rivet, the fillet. So we don't end up botching our, our nice job. Now the hardest part, well I should say, let's say the second hardest part of building is coming up and that's waiting for this epoxy to dry because I'm not the most patient person in the world. But uh, the number one hardest thing to do is waiting for paint to dry. That's why I put this at a close second. But we'll let this set up overnight and then tomorrow We'll get up attack sanding it and uh, 
and continuing on with our build. So far I'm liking what I'm seeing, it's looking good. Okay, so that's all the fins. Now the center pieces. See why I elected to hold off on the launch lugs? Because they would have been massively in the way for this project. And I find that blue painter's tape is about the best tape there is to use for this because not only does it hold straight lines on the edges, but it peels off nicely without pulling cardboard with it. See, it's still smooth as glass. Some other harder um, masking tapes can actually peel a layer of cardboard off, which would absolutely destroy your finish. But I just want to do this nice, slow and steady. I mean, in theory, I could, if I ripped it off too quickly, I could damage the, the cardboard, but uh, just a nice, slow and steady pace. Okay. So that takes care of those. Now I'm going to undo the front and the rear tape. And there's one more step I need to do and that just involves a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol just to sort of clear up and smooth out some of the, the edges that might have little ridges on them because that's just going to make sanding that much harder once it's dry. All right. So there you have it. I don't know if you can See there, nice shiny coat. Okay, now for example, on the, the, the front ends here of the fins, that's where I want to smooth them out a little bit with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. So let me grab another Q-tip. I'm just gonna douse the, uh, the Q-tip al with alcohol. And then just come in here and just sort of clean up maybe the leading edge where it kind of has a squared off look, kind of give it a little roundness to it. This is where, uh, I guess if you wanted to say artistic skills might help. <laughs> I don't have the steadiest hand, but The alcohol thins out the epoxy and makes it a little runnier and smoother and easier to manipulate. The back end, I'm going to leave it squared off. I like that look to it. Okay, not much else we can do other than just like I said earlier, just be patient and let it dry. Let me 
Smooth those up, the leading edge a little bit, kind of going up the fin. Again, just any little bit you can do now will save yourself headaches down the road with sanding. All right, awesome little fillet job we got there. That's gonna really help hold these fins solid. A little bit on the trailing edge there. Yeah, be sure and check the back corners. I just had the one little piece there. Okay, I'm calling that good. I'm gonna set this aside and patiently wait for it to dry overnight and, um, and we'll get right back at it next step. Okay, as you can see, I've done some work off camera. I went ahead and took our baffle and attached a, oh, approximately six inch piece of 100 pound Kevlar cord from the eyelet to where the loop is for the shock cord. So what this does is it makes this, this section somewhat permanent, but I'll be able to replace the elastic if it ever gets burned or you know just decays or rots out due to old age. Um, in addition to tying a double knot, I did run some heat shrink over the knot just to keep it intact and help keep you know the fire off it in case any does leak through the baffle. And I also installed a little heat shrink on the knot for the loop as well. And then where I tied the elastic, by the way, this is the elastic I got in the fabric section at Walmart. It, um, I don't know, it seems to me, I mean, there's rubber bands inside, but uh, I've had some success with it, so I'm going to go with it on this project. And then I heat shrinked over the knot there as well. Now, for the purpose of the next step, which is gluing the baffle into the body tube, I was trying to figure out how am I gonna put the glue in here and then put this through and not get any glue on the shock cord. And I came up with an idea and we'll see if it works, but I simply took a piece of PVC pipe, cut out a little cardboard centering ring. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route the shock cord through the pipe, which should, in theory, keep the shock cord off the, the side where I'm going to be applying the glue. I'm going to be a gluing the baffle in with wood glue. Again, cardboard to cardboard. This is an excellent adhesive, so we're going to be using that. And it dries pretty quickly as well. So let me go ahead and lay the, the bead of glue on the inside. Then I'm going to route my shock cord down through the, the pipe. And then I'm just going to simply slide the baffle in. Once I get the baffle in, then I can pull the, the centering ring out in the pipe with the shock cord in it. So let me go ahead and try not to bump the camera, which I tend to do quite a bit. So let me just make sure there's no tangles in the shock cord. Okay, I did put a, a snap swivel on this end and this one's got the little hook on it to keep it from even pulling out under extreme uh, pressure. Um, yeah, so we'll see how this one works out. I've had success with uh, other swivels in the past, but they can pull out this way, whereas this style, I wish it focus, with that little hook, it should prevent it from pulling out in any way. So let's go ahead and First of all, let me make sure that this will even fit through the... Just do a quick trial run here. Yeah, it does. So no problems there. Okay. So I'm going to take my wood glue. Now the manual, I should say this to you, the manual shows that you put the baffle in the aft part of the rocket body, the bottom portion and then the top, but it really doesn't matter one way or the other. I think it's gonna be easier to do my little trick here without having to worry about the whole assembly. It's just it's a lot more convenient not having it all stacked together like that. So let me, in fact, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to grab a piece of tape. 
and tape this pipe down just so I don't, it doesn't slide out on me. That'll easily re be removed later on, but now it won't, it won't slide around as much. It's down about three quarters of an inch or so. All right, so now we'll take our glue and run a bead along that lip. Okay, and we're just gonna take our finger Okay, so we've got our nice bead, and that's actually, that's a little much, so let me wipe off a little bit more. You'd be amazed at how thin this stuff gets, and it spreads out really thin. So, there we go. Now, let's test our little idea here. Let me run the cord. Again, this just keeps the shock cord from ever getting into the glue. Okay. Now I've already pre-marked a one inch little line here on the tube which is the halfway point of the baffle but I'm just going to twist this as I push it in now the hook is actually hitting my PVC so let me pull that out a little bit continue to run this in to our mark and go ahead and pull this all the way out there we go so now this is set I don't know how well you can see in there but there is a little bit of fillet which is perfect around the outer edge that means we've got full coverage of the glue around the baffle in the tube. So we're just going to let that sit for oh, maybe 30 minutes or so and then we're going to come back and glue this end onto the bottom end of the rocket. Okay, we've had about 30 minutes for the baffle to dry in the upper tube and it's solid enough now where we can go ahead and glue it to the bottom half without this shifting on us at all. And I've still got my shock cord up, tucked up in the tube there so that's nice and clean. I uh, didn't get any glue on it, which is good because you don't want the glue to affect the uh, the elasticity of the the rubber band or anything like that. So anyhow, this is a pretty straightforward process. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to run a bead of glue around the inside lip here, slide the baffle in, and just sit it upright and let it dry. And again, letting it dry is the hardest part for me. So let me go ahead and get my wood glue out. run a bead along the inside. Now I'm going to try not to put on as much as I did on the last time because I, I had to take quite a bit of glue out. So we'll just try to be a little more conservative this go around. All right and just work it out with our finger. And this time I'm going to put, I'm just going to kind of dab the outer lip just so we get a little bit of bond with the tube on that joint as well. And when we go and finish the rocket with paint and primer and all that, that gap will get filled in with, with putty as well. But just want to create a little adhesion there. 
Okay. So here we go, the moment of truth. Slide that in, and again, twist and rotate to help spread the glue around. And for no other reason than it's just fun, I'm gonna try to align the spirals there, <laughs> right at that joint. Okay, and just gonna kinda wipe a little bit of that glue that squeegeed out on us. Okay. I will go ahead and run a little bit of tape just to help hold that joint as tight as possible. Okay, I'm just going to do a side alignment, make sure. It looks good and straight, although there was no wobble to it, so there was really no chance of it going off kilter, but it looks good. And I'm just going to set a little tray here to hold the rocket upright. And now the hard part, letting it sit for a good half hour or so. All right, so uh, we'll check back in at the end of this segment and work on the next project. Okay, the next thing I want to do while the body tubes are drying is I want to go ahead and attack the nose cone. Now, as you know, I have modified pretty much every nose cone I've ever had gotten to open up the hole there large enough to be able to insert my altimeters into the front. As far as I'm concerned, this is a huge waste of space if you're not using it. And of course, the idea is to keep our rocket stable is to get all of our weight at least as much as we can forward to move the CG forward of the center of pressure, uh, pressure. So in order to do that, we need to open up this hole large enough to be able to put in our altimeters. Now, I, when I run the bigger rockets, I put my flight sketch in a little protector pouch here. But uh, you can see if I open up just this half moon shape here, I'm gonna leave the eyelet intact so we can attach everything. But if I open up this area here, I'll be able to slide this in and I don't think I'll be able to fit the Jolly Logic altimeter in there with the pouch, but if I were to take it out of the pouch, it might be able to fit in there on its own. But uh, if I just have to, if I can only run one altimeter, so be it. And before I sand it and paint it and get this all, you know, prettied up, I want to do the mechanical work to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Dremel and just with a quarter inch drum sander on it and uh or sanding drum and uh just open up that hole long uh, large enough to be able to fit the altimeters in so let's go ahead and do that now Plastic is really melting and heating up and <laughs> kind of spreading out on me there. But we got the initial hole kind of enlarged. Now we're just going to kind of clean it up.
Okay, that's a rough cut and still needs a lot of little final cleaning. The area which I'm actually pleased to see, but the area right under the eyelid is pretty beefy. And that's a good thing because that means they took their time to strengthen that area so that won't work its way loose. However, it is making my job a little more difficult. I'm just gonna clean a little bit of this up. Um, let me see if I can attack that with the knife. There we go. Yeah, that's a lot easier to do with the knife. Okay, so let's see if this will fit. Yep, sure enough, there we go. So the Flight Sketch Mini Altimeter will fit in there. And a little tight is good because that'll keep it a little bit more secure. And uh, so I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit more with my knife and some sandpaper and then that's gonna be complete. Now I get to keep the eyelet intact. What I'm gonna do though is instead of hooking everything directly to that, more than likely I'm gonna take a little maybe one inch, make a one inch loop with Kevlar cord to anchor onto there and then I can clip everything onto that to, uh, Kevlar. So there we go. The nose cone is almost ready to paint. Okay, now that I've got the nose cone already bored out the hole big enough for my altimeters, uh, it's time to paint it. And because this is more like a polypropylene plastic, the primer may not stick to it as well as it normally would on like styrene or something uh, like that. So what I'm gonna first do is spray this with an adhesive promoter. This is what I use, Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. I'm gonna spray this on first and then then the primer will stick better to the plastic. So I'm going to put this on, then primer it, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to film while I paint, but uh, what I'll do at a, at a minimum is provide uh, like a slideshow of photos as I progress through the painting. And that goes for the rocket as well. Okay, so now we're at the point where the body tube is completely hardened and solid. And I'm really itching to get these launch lugs on so I can get the paint on, but before I put the launch lugs on, there are three bands that need to be glued onto the body tube. Two of them in particular must be glued on, must be glued on before the launch lug is because once that launch lug's on, there's no way of sliding this back to where it needs to go or where they need to go because there's going to be two of them right here. In fact, the middle band of the three, because the, the first one's up near the top, the middle one is actually the base for the launch lug to mount up against. So it's imperative that I get this one right in the right location. And then of course, the bottom one will go right there. And simply, I'm gonna just take some wood glue. I've already marked off the locations. In fact, the three rings measure from the back to the base of each ring. The first one's at six and three eighths of an inch. The second one is at eight and three sixteenths of an inch. And then the one up at the front is 22 and three quarters from the rear, but I just measured one and a quarter from the front. <laughs> a whole lot easier to do it that way. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take my wood glue, run a bead around, push the band on, and th that will spread it. And of course I'll twist it, and then uh, we'll just wipe off the excess with a Q-tip to keep things nice and clean. So I keep bumping the camera, I apologize. Okay, so let's get the first ring on the tube and ready to go. So we're just gonna run a small bead along the line. And we're going to slide this on and just rotate it. Okay. And like I said, get a Q-tip and we're just going to wipe up the excess.
So if you're doing this, just worry about getting it on first. Don't worry about doing fillets just yet. All right, so there are the three bands. They are on and secure. We'll let them sit for a while. And our next step will be attaching the launch lugs, one at the very base and then one up just forward of the middle band. So there we have it. We are making progress, getting closer to painting time. Okay, the three bands are glued on securely and off camera I went ahead and laid down some fillets to go around. That did two things. One, it it may have given it a little bit of aerodynamic advantage, but more so than that, what it did was it filled in any little gaps that there might have been because this band wasn't just perfectly snug on the body tube. There was a little bit of slop, which means in certain areas around the band there might have been an air gap. So when it came time to painting, that air gap would have really would have created a problem. So I wanted to fill all that in and just make a, a smooth, level coat for something for the paint to sit on and the primer to sit on as well. So I went ahead and did the fillets up front and in the rear two bands. So now we're at the point where we are ready to glue the launch lugs on. Now this is probably going to be one of the easiest steps in the whole building because I've already got the center lines drawn. This goes right up against the base of the tube and up front, the front lug goes right up against the middle band there. And as long as we glue it up in those positions and keep them aligned with that center line, we should be good to go. And it's as simple as just running a small bead of the wood glue. And then once I do get these glued down and secure, I will create some fillets with some epoxy on the sides. So that'll strengthen it up even further. But for now, we're just gonna lay down a very light coat of wood glue. Hardly any at all. Okay. And I'm just gonna lay it down on that rear center line. We're gonna get this one down first and then we can use it to side align the middle one. So I'm just gonna set it down. Oh, and also on off camera, I sanded down the cardboard a little bit to roughen it up to get the, the glaze off so the glue will adhere a little bit better. So I'm just gonna lay this down right on the center line. That's already there. And if a little bit oozes out, that's okay. I'm not gonna clean that up because we're gonna fill it over it anyway. So I'm just gonna sight from behind. Okay, that alignment looks good. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the front. And it is amazing how little glue you need for this. So even just that little bit is probably too much. I'm having to wipe some off anyway. All right, same process here. It's gonna align on the center line and butt up against that band right there. Like so. Okay, I'm gonna press it down. Okay, and side align from behind.
We've got a little bit of working time, but not a whole lot. So you want to get it on and get it, get it down quickly. But uh, that looks really good. That looks perfect right there. Okay, so now we're just going to let that dry. And then uh, we will lay down some fillets. And then we are finally ready for primer and paint. Okay, now that the launch lugs are cured and set up properly, it's time to put down the fillets. And this is probably a little bit of overkill, but I'm gonna use rock epoxy, the same thing that I did the fillets with the, the fins. Uh, the launch lugs don't take the stress that the fins do, but I wanted something that would hold its form while it cures. That's why I'm going with the rock epoxy because it's a little bit thicker formula. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and just like I did before with the fins, and I've already pre-masked these off and got them ready. But I'm going to start with just kind of pushing the... I'll start with here, because this is going to be the little harder one. Pushing it up into that area that I want to fill. Because I don't want any air, air pockets, if I can avoid it. Now once I get up in that groove filled in, then I can go ahead and run the popsicle stick, making the curve that I want. But I first want to ensure that I get all the glue up where I want so there's no air pockets, like I said. Okay. So let me just draw this out. Just like so. Perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this like I did on the on the fins. Kind of start filling in the other side with that. Draw this out. Perfect. Now there'll probably be just a little bit of cleanup to do around the front end once I remove the tape, but that'll be easy to do with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. Okay, now we're gonna do the front fin. Draw this out. Let's get some of that on the back on the other side here. And you'll, you'll notice I'm using two different toothpick or um, popsicle sticks. I, I'm using the one that has the most clean curvature to it to run the fillets. I don't want any jagged edges or any nicks or anything in the wood that could leave a groove. Whereas this stick, I really don't care about. I'm just using it to, to get the epoxy onto the surface. 
but to draw it out cleanly, that's why I'm using the, the other popsicle stick for smooth fillet making. Okay, that looks perfect. So I'm gonna set the glue aside. I'm gonna get my Q-tips ready. And a paper towel ready. And take my rubbing alcohol. And now I'm just gonna simply remove the tape. Good so far. Okay. So, uh, let's leave that on while I just kind of clean the front one up a little. Actually, there's not much to do on this one. I'm pretty pleased with this one so far. Yeah, there's really nothing nothing else to do on that one. That came out perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get the, uh, the forward lug completed. And I can already tell it's not going to take much on the front either. I'm going to put a little bit of alcohol down just to kind of smooth out the, the, the base where it meets the cardboard. To maybe thin it out just a little bit. There is some on the launch lug I need to get pulled up. Okay, now this one had a little bit of an air pocket. I don't know if the cameras can pick that up or not. So, I'm going to take a Q-tip with some epoxy and just work it into that air pocket. And I will thin that with some alcohol so it'll kind of smooth out. That'll flush it out and level it smooth. Okay, back to what I was working on here. Yeah, 
Yeah, that, that self-leveled pretty well. Okay. I almost feel like there should be more to do, but there just isn't. So at the risk of breaking something that doesn't need to be fixed, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it and let it sit and cure overnight. And looking at the rear, rear looks good as well. Yeah, we're just gonna let it sit now and uh, we'll do some primering probably in the next day or two. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that little slideshow there of the, the photos as the painting process was going on. Uh, as you know, it's kind of hard for me to film and paint at the same time, so I like to just to kind of do a slideshow of photos. But the rocket is now complete. I just want to show you the final, literally the final step, and I'll just be attaching the nose cone to the shock cord. But uh, just to give you a, a I'm going to try to get the whole rocket in here, but just to show you what it looks like after all the decals have been applied. Well first the paint obviously, the decals, and then I went over it with Pledge Floor Gloss and I'll show you that here in a second. And there's the front of the tube. And I'll show you what I use for paint so you, in case you want to build this kit, what I elected to go with. I, I had to make one substitution and I'll tell you about that in a second. But I started out with the nose cone. Uh, the nose cone was simply masked off on the shoulder and then I, I primered it with some gray Rust-Oleum primer, sanded it, got that smooth. I ran some putty down the seam line, sanded that down with the primer and then once it was ready to go I, clear, I, I shot it with Rust-Oleum metallic finish and this is aluminum 7715. So this is what I like to go with on the nose cone. I think it came out really sharp. I'm really, really pleased with it. I've got three coats on here, and no doubt it'll probably you know, have some scuffs and some scrapes after a few landings out in the rocks, but uh, it'll be easy enough to, to touch up when and if that time ever comes. I did tie off a little uh, Kevlar loop here, so this is my anchor point that all my attachments will go to, the altimeters, the parachute, the shock cord, everything will, will pivot off of this looped cord as opposed to the plastic uh, just to kind of simplify things so that's that the body itself was painted with what they call for is rust-oleum navajo white i could not find any i went to a couple different walmarts and lowe's places that carry rust-oleum and they did not have well they hard, had hardly anything in stock anyway but uh needless to say they did not have any navajo white so I, I was at Lowe's the other day and I found this white. It's called Gloss Dover White. It's almost the same color as the Navajo White based on the picture of the face card of the rocket. This was a very, very similar color. So I went with this and I must say, to be honest with you, uh, I might be done with Rust-Oleum. The Krylon went down so much smoother and easier, less runs, uh, less splotches, no crackles in the paint. Uh, much better results. You pay a little bit more, not a whole lot more, but a little bit more, but you definitely get uh, better results. So I'm convinced. Anyway, I did paint the entire rocket with the Krylon. Now I did primer the whole rocket with Rust-Oleum primer. Uh, I haven't had any trouble with the Rust-Oleum primer. It's a little bit thin. It doesn't fill in the spirals like some other uh, fillable primers do. 
but uh, it was sufficient. It took a few coats. And then after the base coat of the Dover White dried, I masked off and did my black striping on the, on the fins. And for that I used Krylon Gloss Black. And I think the product number for that one is 2702. So that's what I went with on the black. I put two or three coats of black down. And after that dried over, you know, then this whole process took a few days. Then I laid the decals down and I just put them in the in the proper places that the instructions called for. And once I got that down, I took my floor polish, Pledge Revive It Floor Gloss. It took hardly any. I mean, we're talking minimal amount. So this, you know, one bottle will go a long, long ways. And I put three coats of this down on the body. Um, I, I held the rocket stood it up vertically and then just painted from top to bottom let it run if need be and uh, it dries at self levels in about 30 minutes so I really could not be more pleased with the results of that floor gloss um, I'm sold on it I may never clear coat with paint ever again <laughs> but uh, yeah so there you have it the rocket is done I am going to attach the nose cone to the shock cord as my final step In the build, open up my little snap swivel. Run it through the Kevlar loop. There you go. And I'm just gonna kind of roll this back up. This isn't how I would actually do it when I'm flying, but. Um, There we go. The rocket is now complete. The Rocketarium VK7 clustered twin motor design with an ejection baffle right here in the middle. And uh, I'll be more than likely flying it with an 18 inch parachute, astro cams, altimeters up in the nose bay, or nose cone area up in the bay there that I think is an absolute waste of space for those who don't utilize it. but. You know, teach his own, but I, I think it's a great opportunity to to store stuff. So there you have it. The next time you see this will be on a launch day's video. I don't have the dual motor cluster wire cabling yet, so I don't have the means of launching this just yet. It's on order. So there may be one or two launch days before you see this debut, but uh, eventually I promise this will show up on a launch day's video and uh, we'll get to see her fly. So for those of you who watched the whole video from the beginning to end, thank you so much for your support and patience in getting through it. I hope you learned some tips and tricks and uh, if you have any suggestions, I more than welcome them. I, you know, this is how I got to where I'm at today is by watching other people's videos. So please include your comments, um, any ideas or suggestions for my next build. So with that guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless and uh, we will see you at a launch day.